Tak, díky, že jste se vrátili z toho předsálí zpátky, že jsem vám zkazil zábavu a poslal jsem vás sem. Ale bude to stát za to. Máme tady hosta opět z Paříže, jmenuje se Catherine Boasset. A pokud jsem o Olivě říkal, že to je člověk, který bojoval za Product Listing Ads, aby jsme měli tady v České republice, tak Catherine je právě člověk, který nám pomáhal získat dynamický remarketing. A musím říct, že to nebylo lehká úloha, protože když se podíváme na země, kde je dynamický remarketing spuštěný, když se podíváme na Evropu, tak je to Francie, Itálie, Španělsko a my. Takže to je asi to, co pro nás udělá Catherine tady pro Českou republiku. A So, Catherine, tell us more. Merci, Jan. Bonjour à tous et merci d'être venu à la session aujourd'hui Remarketing with Google. Donc, Remarketing avec Google. Some people ask that we, I may say words in French, so that was it. So, my name is Catherine and I'm here today to present like a session around Remarketing with Google. So, we will like go through like the advanced remarketing as well as dynamic ads. That is like a new thing for Czech Republic. So let's go through the agenda of today. So why data is crucial? So you may wonder like why, like Daniel already mentioned, I didn't get everything that he said, but I, I got like lots of time data, big data. So we will see how you can use this data, like with remarketing, the data you have on your website, but also the data that we can have about like your customer, their on-site behavior and see how we can use like in remarketing, but also like in advertising in general. After we'll have like remarketing with Google. So most of you are probably already using our product, thanks for this, but we may want to go a little bit further. So outside of the basic stuff of doing like, I want to make people convert when they leave their shopping cart, we may want further to cover the whole funnel and do like some other stuff that I will show you. Uh, even more opportunity, don't forget to optimize your campaign. So we will look at some tips about like optimizing, what kind of value you should look at. And we will like spend some time about like automated bidding. So conversion optimizer, I will give you some details about how it's working and why you should use it with your remarketing campaign. Then quickly, I will mention like two other products. If you don't want to use remarketing with us, maybe that's worth tagging your website to use like remarketing leads for search ads. So another product that use the data from our tag and that helps you like optimize your performance of the search campaign. As well, if, if you need like some incremental leads, maybe you want to look with two similar audiences, so product that we will go through later. And last but not least, dynamic ads. So the beta we are launching in Czech Republic. So I will cover like quickly how it works, uh, as well as like dynamic ads, so remarketing, but also like dynamic ads for contextual campaign. And if we have time, I, of course, I will take any question at the end. So why data is crucial? So I, I will start from the publisher side. So on the GDN, we have like lots of websites. And some of them, like we just have an ad to serve. So we know that this ad is like available for you to target, but you may, may want to know like why you should and how much you should pay for this one and if you should pay to appear on this website. So how much an impression is worth for you? We can get like some data from the website. So for example, if you may want to bid only like six kroner, check crowns <laughs> if, you, uh, if you know only that it's this website. But if you know that the article is talking about this subject because your action and, or your customer may have activity around this industry, maybe you want to bid a little bit more. And that's the same behind like this, we have like information about like the audience, so the user that are currently seeing this website. And if we know that is like in a purchase intent, maybe it's worth like bidding 12. Right now, at this time of the day, that's also something we can take into account to say, at this time in the evening, we know that there's even more chance for this customer, like this people that is browsing the website to convert. So maybe 15 is the right price to pay. And finally, if you are also have some store, maybe just because it's closed from this store, you want to pay like 20 and show in the ad maybe like that you have some shops. 
So this goes along like all the targeting, like audience targeting we are offering. So that could be like behavioral, demographic, psychographics, and of course like the remarketing piece. So I just show you like how like data from the publisher side can influence like your buying and targeting, but it can also influence like all the other piece of your advertising strategy. So the pricing and bidding was also a little bit mentioned, but after like the creative, if you know that it's like a male or female, maybe you want like to present a different ad. It's the same like if you creative be depending on the subject of the article. For reporting as well, maybe you want a split depending on the audience. So it's inside segmentation and optimization, of course. So all your advertising and marketing strategy can depend on this data information you may get. Now, how can this be translated on your website? So we saw from a publisher point of view how you get this data and how you will, it will influence like your buying. But it, this is the same like on your website. So this is like a bank finance website and you won't think that it's the same audience looking at, for example, some mortgage or some saving. So it's not the same. You know that these customers are different. They are not in the same state of mind if they look for mortgage compared if they look for saving accounts. So there's like lots of parts on the same page that can differentiate the visitor. Instead of just knowing that the visitor browse this page, you will know, like, for example, which part he grows, and it will well help you understand a little bit more about like, his intent or just like, about what kind of state of mind he currently is. So all this clue you gather on your website, you can use it later on. That can be like the center. So this is another way to present like, the cycle I just presented around like, your marketing strategy. This is more like to show you that like, it can increase sales, lower your CPA, increase profit, and, and so on. This is like really a lifetime circle. And just to bring it up with the remarketing piece, because you may wonder why I'm talking about this so much, this is like retain and acquire. So don't think about like remarketing only like to acquire new customer, but it's also like to retain your existing customer and build your loyal customer even more. So on the remarketing piece, so to get this data, you need to have some tags on your website. So probably most of you know, but we have like three kinds of tags that can be used to, for remarketing. So first we have Google Tag Manager. So this is like the new container tag that we launched last October, if I remember. And this is like a container tag where you can put all the other ones. So that could be something like to invest at the beginning and after at least you can modify, edit, add any tag you, you want to this website easily. The second one is Google Analytics. So you may have heard as well, it was launched more or less at the same time, but just by modifying like two lines of your code for us to be able like to drop another cookie, the double click one in which it depends for GDN. You just have to modify this and after you can like take advantage of all the valuable insight you get from analytics. So we'll give some example later. But just for you to know, Google Analytics won't be compatible at the moment with the two beta I will mention later. So we're marketing list for search and dynamic ads. So, but you can use two tags at the same time if you want to get like insight and use all of them. And finally, the new remarketing tag. So this was launched last summer and this is like the normal remarketing tag that you can get within your accounts directly. For other contents, so this is just like related tag to the content that you have on your website. But in remarketing, think a little bit broader. We also have like YouTube content, so video, channel. And for this one, sometimes the tag is already integrated. Sometimes you have to add it. So remarketing with Google. Let's go a little bit further. So this is like the normal funnel and probably like the easiest one to understand how remarketing impact and it can even impact your search. So it's really taking ac into account like your world traffic on your website and we target them like to make them finish the purchase cycle or at least do whatever you want them to do on your website. It can be just like a newsletter subscription, it can be filling a form, so it's not always like a purchase. Your KPI and your goal could be completely different depending on your objective. 
So that's also something probably you're familiar, you may have seen already this number, but keep in mind that it's like a big part, a big chunk of your traffic that is not doing the first time they visit whatever you want them to do. So this is why like remarketing it's really important and make closing the loop in the purchase cycle or just in the transaction cycle. 96 persons, it's really a lot. And you can understand they have to put credit cards to buy something or they have to be like at the right place or maybe they were on mobile and they want to to do like the purchase in the evening at home. So there's lots of reason and you may want to look at your own figures for your customer or your own website. It may differ, but in retail, that's the average we see. Now I wanted to emphasize, like I mentioned in the introduction, that usually people are doing it like for the purchase part, so the lower funnel part. But I want to prove to you that you have to do remarketing for all steps of the funnel. It's like making the people go from the upper step when they are just engaged a little bit with your brand, when they start knowing you, but they are not like browsing a lot on your websites. But you want them to go one step lower and lower. So don't think that they will watch a video on YouTube and directly purchase. So you have also to have some specific KPIs for each level. So that won't be the same CPA level if we are talking about CPA for people in the upper funnel, but it's worth investing in them and making them go down one step further. So for example, in the upper funnel, so I mentioned like we have YouTube remarketing, so you can do remarketing on your video content. So through you, for example, you can do like on your masthead, if you're doing some masthead, you can do with your channel, people who register to your channel. So you have some video like lists that can be easily done through AdWords for video. But you can also consider like homepage strategy. So people who have visited your website recently, but just stayed at the homepage level. So we don't really know why they didn't go further. Maybe that's the navigation of the website, that maybe they were busy and they had to close the window and will come back later. But anyway, it's worth reminding them and bidding to make them aware like, oh, you came to my website, you were interested, can I help you a little bit more? And you present them with like an offer. So you try to make them going down in the interest and consideration piece. So if we go on the interest consideration, Let's consider for like an e-commerce website that will be like the category of a product page, maybe where you have several products. So it's like people were interested but didn't go further. So you don't really know like if the price were okay, if it delivery like solution that you were offering were fine with them. But for sure you want to target them and offer them something specific. So what is important is really like to customize your message. If they, and we will see later that dynamic ads can really help on this. So like category, maybe like if they are looking for, I don't know, clothes, you may want to target them with clothes again and maybe with a small discount to make them like a call to action, to make them like act really quickly. Or you want to target them because you know that they were looking for summer clothes and it's still winter. So you know that maybe you have more time. So you really need to think up front and don't take like decision too quickly, but for sure there are like people interested in your product. And you probably already invested a lot to make them come to your website. So it's worth investing a little bit more just to make sure that they don't finish the purchase cycle somewhere else. And last, so the, the piece that you probably all know, like the purchase one. So people put some, some products in the shopping cart but didn't buy. So you may want to look as well on maybe analytics on some of our tools. What were the bottlenecks? Why they didn't buy? Do you think it's because of a price, because of a delivery that they, sometimes you put a product in the shopping cart and after you realize that you will get lots of delivery fee. So that may be something like you want to communicate if you're ready to do like a little promotion or a little something to make them aware like you were interested in this product we do something for you this time, like we want you to buy on our website. And last but not least, like the converters. Lots of people are forgetting about them. It's like, but they, it's okay, they, buy, they bought on my website. No, you want them like to buy again. 
So either you want them to upsell other products that are like complementary, for example, or you want them, like if it's a product that you buy like every two months, you want them to buy again in two months on your website, and you want to be sure that it will be on your website. So it's worth looking at the loyalty, like a CRM. Remarketing could be used as a CRM tool as well. So just a quick summary, I won't go about all of them, lots of text on this slide, but just like to summarize the highlights of remarketing with Google. So just to make sure you can maybe like check already what you were doing perfectly well. So we have like transparency. I think it's one of the biggest advantage. It's like really you can see what works for you that don't really work and you can take adjustments. Adjustment can be taken thanks to targeting optimization. So maybe you want to layer some over targeting on top of remarketing, or you want to exclude some placement, or you want like to maybe like add some over format or optimization. And another piece like in terms of performance is the bidding one. So sometimes, as I mentioned earlier, like data is important, but you don't really know how much you should bid. Like, is it like, should I double or should I just do like a plus 10 person for this segment? We don't know. So we also have like auto-optimized bidding tool that can help you define for each impression as how much you should bid. Um, let's talk about inventory. So on the publisher side, so on the other side, you have your cookie list, but you want to make sure that you appear like on the inventory. So there's like exclusivity. Text ads is something that no one else can take advantage of. Like via the ad exchange, we are the only one to be able to access the text only inventory. So don't forget to add like text ads to remarketing. Even if you're doing remarketing somewhere else, that's something you cannot take advantage of. So text only inventory, really important and exclusive. And the ease of use. If you want to test like some promotional messages and you don't really want to invest, we have also display ad builder that can help you like build different ads to target different segments, promote different things, and see what is working better for you. And finally, I always already mentioned the YouTube remarketing piece, so it's really like an audience. We have lots of platforms, so we can really customize what you are doing. Segmentation. So this is really related to data. Why you should segment your customers. So if I go back like to the finance website that I had at the beginning, I told you about like people who are looking for mortgage are different from people from who are looking for saving. They are not like in the same financial state for sure, so you don't want them like to you don't want to target them the same way. So this is the this is true for every website. Don't think only about like retail with a purchase. It's true for travel. People looking like for a flight tomorrow for business class is not the same as people looking for a flight like in six months or maybe the cheapest they can find. So segmentation is key, and I I will show you so how easy it can be done like in retail. So just to make sure that you customize your message and your bid, you have to segment and deliver a specific message. So this is really related to on-site behavior, but analytics can give you some additional value. So for example, with analytics, you can also have insight around the engagement. So you have like bounce rate, you have a time of engagement, the number of page views. Maybe that's also something you want to explore because you know that your, your audience is really like loyal later on when they visited at least 10 pages on your website. If you have this insight, that's something you can use. But don't start just guessing. It's like because you have insight that you can use it. So if you don't know, just start from the on-site behavior. So for example, we have the on-page visitor. So discover great deals, a generic message. You don't really know what they are interested in and you want to bid like the lowest usually. After maybe for people who visited T-shirt, you want them to check out again because you have like new arrivals, new products available, so you want to tell them this message. I have new products for you, please, it's like please come back. And for this one, maybe like $3 is the right bid you are willing to pay. Let's go directly, for example, to the payment abandoners. So for this one, you are ready to do like a little gesture with like 30% off. So 30%, you wouldn't customize this message for on-page visitor. You don't even know if it's what they are looking for. For people who did just stop before the payment, probably it's. 
they were looking for a promotion or delivery. So free delivery or little promotion can help. And the past purchaser, it's like people who are interested in this product were also interested in this product, so you want to target them. And after, like for past purchaser, it's more like in matter of CRM, how much you are willing to pay to make them come back. So I mentioned like the engagement for analytics, but there's really lots of more. You can also do like referrals, like if people come from search paid, if people come from search uh, free search results, if they come with Google Plus, so you also want to know like if they came to your website from a specific source, maybe that's worth more. And there's plenty of things, there's like 200 I think insights you can use in analytics. So let's go a little bit further now. I will put everything on the slide. So just like with a new remarketing tag, what you can do is build lists depending on the words that you have in your URL. So for example, if your URL is containing electronics, you can build a list with like URL contains electronics. And you will get like all cookie of people who visited a page where electronics was in the URL. But maybe some we your website is not like built this way. You don't have in your URL something specific to this page and you want to know like how you can do it. So for this reason, or just if you want to go a little bit further in segmentation, you may be interested in custom parameters. And that's also something you will have to use if you want to do dynamic ads, we'll see later. So custom parameters, you have like in blue on the slide, the generic new remarketing tag. So JavaScript, generic tag. On top of it, you want to add some little script with like some custom values or key values that you want to pass in the tag. So it means that you, once we, we have a visitor visiting this page, in addition to just knowing he was on the page, we know, for example, like information about what product was on the page, what maybe what the value of the product was. So information that are not personal, PII information is not allowed. So this is really just information about like product value, margin, maybe something you want to pass as well. So this is to go like a little bit further. And in this way, so we have like, for example, P name, and it triggers automatically with JavaScript that the P name on this page was Nexus 7. And because it was Nexus 7, when you build the list and say, I want all the cookies that have like P name equals Nexus 7, in this case, the cookie will go in this list. So this is another way to build lists and to get like more insight about them. And you can really, as soon as it's not personal information, you can think further, broader. So if you have like quality score for, I don't know, in your CRM tool, maybe you want to pass like this potential user will be a number one, this potential user will be a number three. So you can pass like whatever data makes sense for you. And this can be used for all industry. It's not like this example is about retail, but if we think like about travel, you may wonder about like origin and destination city, for example. People who are looking for a flight from Prague to Paris, so origin on the page will be Prague and destination will be Paris, and maybe you want to pass the dates, maybe you want to pass the class like economic or business, uh, the number of tickets that they were looking, if it's a family, single, couple. So you, you may get more information in the cookie than just people who are interested in this flight. So once you have built like your remarketing campaign, we'll see like what are the main things to look at in terms of optimization and what's something that is really close to my heart, why you should use conversion optimizer with remarketing. So why do you need to optimize? So there's always like in remarketing, at least as much as in any other campaign, like room of improvement. So you have like a cookie that goes to a list. Maybe in this list you will have like thousand cookies. But depending on the bids you put, depending on the format that you have like available in your accounts, you may reach only maybe like 30 or 40 percent on this cookie. So 300 to maybe 400 percent will be rich, and 600 you won't manage to reach them while they are in your list. So this is something to look at, like in terms of impression share, 
but also like share of user. So what I just explained was share of user. Impression share is something you can just add a column in your accounts and you'll see that sometimes for display it's really low. Um, another one, yeah, so I mentioned earlier like to use text ads because we have quite a lot of inventory that is text only and it's also appealing really well to remarketing campaign. So just to emphasize with a little dog's image, like use it every kind of available format and sizes you can, just to give you more chance to reach as more users that are on your list as possible. It's quite a short time frame. You have usually like a list for 30 days, even sometimes less. So this is just like a time frame you have to, to be able to talk again to this potential user or this already existing user. So give you as much chance as possible. So conversion optimizer, so let's go on the automated bidding tool. Um, let's consider it as our real-time bidding tool. RTB is really like a world, like a fashion world at the moment. So you can consider it like this. So you start with ECPC to give our system some flexibility. And after, as soon as it's eligible, you can move to conversion optimizer. So why using conversion optimizer? It's just like it will work for you and decide like which bid for a target CPA that you are set, which bid should be invested for each impression. So on some website, because it's a subject close to your activity, it may be more. It may be more as well if your cookie is quite recent on the list. It means like if the people came to your website like yesterday or three days before, they are more engaged with your brand. They are still in mind that they, they were on your website and they are probably more ready to act on this than if it was like 10, 29 days ago, for example. So it takes into account, as I mentioned, some signals. So of course there's like signals from your list performance, but we are also looking at user attributes. So I mentioned the recency, but also like geographic, where is the user located? So lots of signals on the user part, but also the context on the page. I mentioned that if you are selling like some sport shoes, if the article is about sport, there's more chance that the people will see your ad and act on it than if, if he's currently looking at a financial uh, website. At least it's what we think and after we let the system analyze if it's true. So some other signals that you may be interested. So some of them are in beta, if I can, yeah. Okay, so on the customer characteristic, we are also looking at what we know. So this is like more like inferred data. What you can imagine from the browsing history of this user in terms of age and gender. If you're selling like uh, women shoes, like heel shoes, maybe we want like to bid more for women when they are. So we try to get like women online and to get this we have like inferred data. The same with the interest, if they are interested in shopping or shoes, we can like see if they are browsing usually more shoe websites than the average of the user on the internet. So consumer. But we are also looking at the current frame of mind. Was it recently that they leave like the sale on your website? Is it like the same session? So are they browsed your website just like a few minutes or a few hours away in the same session? Or is it like the same page? what device was used as well. So we can't do cross device, but we can analyze what device was used and how frequently he already saw your ads because like we, want, we don't want to spam them. So it's just like if it's already something that is so frequently, we will probably stop showing him. And finally, so like the little numbers in the animation are not that good, but site visitor uh, actions. So what section of your site was visited, how many pages, product did they see, and some of them are in beta. So when, what I mean by beta in these signals, it's just like from time to time, like engineers are inputting more and more signals, testing them to see if it's working better, letting them if it's the case, and maybe like put them like more importance in the whole algorithm, or if it's not the case, we just leave it out and start with another beta. So we have some, for example, running at the moment around the value. If you are passing the value of a product, that may be something we take into account. It means like for products of 500, maybe like we want to bid like a little bit more because it was more interested for you. The same with, could be with a margin. 
lifetime parameters, if we have a lifetime value of someone, the past purchases on your website and a little bit more in general, and the time since the last conversion. So this is just like example of signals, but there are really like hundreds of them. And finally, like if you are not convinced yet about like the importance of recency and why you should use like conversion optimizer with remarketing. So since a year now, recency is really integrated in conversion optimizer for remarketing. And we have statistics, so this is the retail one, but we have like for all sectors, statistics that show like how many percent of the conversion occur in the five, in this one it's the first five days, and how cheaper this conversion were. Because the people really remember coming to your website, because they are still interested in this product, it's performing better. So this is like obvious, everyone knows. You probably have to analyze for your own website if it's four or five days, but the best is really like to let our system like analyze for you and decide like for the first two days how much you should bid for each impression when the impression is available and just to manage to get to your target CPA. So in this case, 68% of the conversion occur the first five days at a 59% cheaper CPA but from the six to the 30 days. And this is another statistic regarding conversion optimizer. So for people who tested it, like on a large sample of customer, we saw like a reduction in terms of CPA and an increase in terms of conversion. So more conversion, cheaper, no reason not to do this. Now let's have a look at what we can do with this tag. So we saw like the remarketing piece and we'll go later to the last innovation. But I wanted to give you a quick update about like remarketing list for search that is still in beta and similar audiences. So two products that are relying on our tag and the data that we get through the tag to improve the performance to get you more conversion. So let's come back to the data piece. So the same way on your website or on the publisher website, it doesn't work the same. It doesn't work, sorry, the same. We have here like three queries on Google. So this is for least BMW convertible, but we see that behind the queries, there are like three different people. So you're probably like aware that don't, not all queries are worth the same. So let's zoom on one of them. So I took the woman. Let's, uh, let's zoom. So we have, for example, an intent. Maybe what's an exactly on our mind? Is, is she just wondering like what would be, if it's possible to lease like a BMW convertible close to where she lives? Or what would be the price? Maybe she didn't put everything in the query. So she has a specific intent in mind. And maybe like from the browsing history, you want to know more things about her, like what device, her location, the time of day. So this is like the context of the search. But after we have like the site activity. If you are like BMW or leasing website for BMW and you know that she already came to your website, maybe that's a customer that you really want like to convert with. So instead of positioning your ads at the position number three, maybe you want to bid a little bit more to position it at the top and make sure that she will click on you because she already came or, and not to someone else. So. so just a quick overview of what you can do. So from your list, you get, for example, people who, have, who came to your website. And from this, you want to optimize, as I mentioned, maybe the search bid for customer that did not convert. Or maybe you just want to like, customize to make like, cross-sell, upsell easier. So that can be through the text ads, but that can be just with a match type or with a destination URL that you will input in your ad text. And the same way, you want to maybe exclude this part from some requests, some queries, and in addition, like add new keywords that were too expensive for you on a generic audience, but that may be worth like spending now that you know that the people are already came to your website. So that was like remarketing list for search, and now maybe you can enhance your remarketing list to get like more clicks, so more conversion at the end. But what happens when you want also like new and incremental leads, but from the GDN? So we have like similar audiences. So I don't know if you're all familiar, but this is how it works. So you have like a seed list. Usually we start and that's where it's easier to understand from the converter. So converter list is really like 
people that you would like to have, like more people like this one. You would like to double this converter list. It's people who purchase on your website. So you are interested to find online on the GDN, so on our publisher network, similar people to this one. So in the industry, it's also known as lookalike technology. So maybe that's something that resonates a little bit more. So you want to find more people. So you, we built for you, if we are able to find similar people with the same like browsing behavior, the same interest on GDN, we will build for you like automatically a, li a remarketing list like similar to converters. So in this case, you just need to tick a box and you will see this list that you can target. So you have like your similar audiences list that is lookalike and what is important is that like we exclude people that were originally so it, for sure it's like incremental people that were not like on your website and on your seed list and what you have to keep in mind about this is like it's really at scale so usually on average it's like the similar audiences list is like seven times the size of the seed list so if you have like thousand converters we should be able on average to find like 7,000 similar people. So that's worth for this one like to target and present them like another message. This is the same, this is really simple. I just mentioned you need to tick a box to see what list are eligible in your accounts and after you define the strategy. So nothing else to put in the tag or nothing else like really difficult. And you can see it like as a in personalized interest category. It's just like if you don't really know which interest your audience is interested at, just let the system decide because it knows from the browsing history that uh, your audience is browsing more than the average maybe financial website. So that's an interest for, for your audience. It's free of use, so you just need to pay for the ads, but no fee or anything regarding like the technology that is behind and its performance. So on the performance side, I have like some, some of the slides after, but keep in mind that it's not remarketing. It's just linked to your remarketing tag, but it has nothing to do. It's not people that know your brand. It's not people that have already engaged with it and been on your website. So it has to be more considered that the CPA should range from your normal like contextual campaign that you build and the remarketing. But don't think that you will have like the same result. And we will see after that I have some external statistic. But it's like a first contact with a new audience. So it will also like fuel the cookie pool for your existing remarketing campaign. So it's like upper funnel, but you make the people go down. So some of them will convert directly, but some of them will need some remarketing afterwards to convert. So the best practice to keep in mind, so create tight remarketing list. This is just what I mentioned, it's working better for converters. Set bids and budgets, so this is nothing to do with your remarketing campaign. The bids have to be set as any contextual, like as any campaign you will target people that don't know you. You can use ad creative and landing page, just also keep in mind here, it's people that don't know you, so they don't know what you sell. So maybe a more generic message. And here as well, you can activate conversion optimizer. I will go quickly on this. You will get like a, a stat, but here it's on the conversion side. So I mentioned already that you re need to run sister remarketing campaign. This is the first step. So after you need like remarketing to convert and close the loop, but maybe you want to look as well like on the view through conversion. So we, we talk to this audience for the first time, maybe they won't click, but in the 30 days they will convert anyway. So at least that can prove yourself that you were right to target this audience, that they were interested for your brand and for your products. So you were really right to target. It's just that they needed some more time to convert, but they were like really interested for you. Some external statistics. So just to give you like, it's usually around 60% more impression. And half of it will be like purely incremental. Half of it will be like on your remarketing campaign that you run simultaneously and it's like on average for this sample of customer it was like 41 percent more conversion at the end so that's not negligible at all so the dynamic ads the innovation that's coming to czech republic so what is necessary for dynamic remarketing so this is going after like olivia's presentation so this is completely linked to google merchant center 
So this is open for the same customer that can open Google Merchant Center, the same policy applies. So this is completely for retail at the moment, plus she mentioned like mobile subscription for telco, auto parts is also like considering as retail. So this is linked to your Google Merchant Center feed and the same data you input in the feed. So from your Google Merchant Center, we get like the inventory of your product. And just to take one category that is really important, it's the product ID. And this product ID, we need to pass in the custom parameters in your tag. So from your Google tag, you get like the product ID. And the two systems will talk to each other. And because it will match, product ID from the tag will match product ID from the merchant center that is linked to your Google AdWords account. It will be able to trigger the image that is associated with this product and also like some description and price. So the data is really coming from the feed. So anything that was said around quality policy is worth it as well. And after in Display Ad Builder, we have like 60 layouts, 60 plus layouts. We have display banners and text ads. So also anything I said earlier about like input, all formats, all sizes is also worth here. So I can go. So I just mentioned the 60 layouts. So this is like the average we saw like in terms of increase of CTR regarding like dynamic ads compared to static, like in countries where the beta was already available. So this is obvious, like people who are interested in this product, they saw this product on their website, so they are more willing and more inclined to click on your ad, they are reminder. So I don't know if I have a stat after, so just to give you on this, usually you see the last product that was viewed on your website and some recommended one. So I didn't put like all detail here, but for example here, like the page is about the t-shirt, so you see that the t-shirt is at the center of your, your ad, and there will be like recommended product by our system. And just like Edward's label that Olivia mentioned is also applying here. If you want to limit the product that is appearing at the same time as a t-shirt, by only over t-shirt, if you have an old words label with t-shirt, you can limit at this point. So text inventory, I mentioned already, we have also text ads, that's something specific to Google, and it can enable us to reach like the text only in portion of the GDN. So take advantage of it, and we see quite good results with uh, text ads. So this was about like dynamic remarketing, but I just wanted to open it a little bit more that dynamic ads could also be leveraged to your contextual targeting campaign and also on your similar audiences campaign. So while you have set up everything, you can also leverage this on any display campaign that you have in your accounts. So in this case, we have like contextual targeting. So you choose your keywords that could be ladies and bag, men's t-shirt, office, and Relevant pages match these keywords, so as any contextual, nothing new here. The only thing that is new is like because the page is talking about handbag, from your product that is pulled automatically from Google Merchant Center, we get like product that are related. So we will favorize like the handbags to be put in the ads on this page. So instead of you manually created ads to, to go within like each category of keywords that you put in your contextual campaign, we can do it dynamically for you. So it's less work on your side. And we see already, so this is starting like even in the other country really recently. So we see already like quite good result, twice better CTR, 1.5 better conversion rate and 68% lower CPA. Just because like, if you have already a really granular campaign, you may not see that result because maybe you already have, but most of the customers don't have really granular. So it helps them to really like put in front of the eyes of the potential user the right products. And the next steps to finish. So five ways, just to summarize a little bit, five ways we Google remarketing is better. So we had the transparency that I mentioned, conversion optimizer, the control that you have on your campaign, targeting solution that you can layer on top of remarketing. And from now on in Czech Republic, we have a dynamic creative beta with Google Merchant Center. If you have to summarize even more and just keep like few things in mind after this presentation, I would say these are the golden rules for remarketing. 
So tag all your websites. This is really important. I hope you understood like to cover the whole funnel and your whole like visitor list. Define your own KPI. So think ahead and think like for which segment you are willing to pay. And after it's like also segment to get like the right story to the right user. So really deliver the right message and give promotion to the people who are worth it and not to everyone just because you don't know how to segment correctly. Use our whole funnel offering so KCT similar audiences can help you. Sometimes people don't have like enough cookie in their list. So if at some point because like it's low season for your product, you need some more like campaign to make people come to your website, that's something you can leverage. And finally, like opti optimization is key. So use the tools that we give you that are our disposal, all the available formats, don't forget about text, and maximize your share of user. And the real next step, so if you're already doing remarketing, you can just like take advantage of either the dynamic ads or all the optimization tips and make sure that you have the right segmentation in place. If you are new to remarketing, I would advise like to talk to your agency or Google representative just to define and maybe brainstorm around what is right for you and tag your whole website. It's always useful. Collect, segment, engage. That will be my last three words. Thank you.